when a covalent liquid boils it mo its molecules become more widely spaced which property of the molecules has the most influence on the energy required to the boil a uh, covalent liquid the forces of attraction between molecules that's actually true uh, between the molecules is what's holding them together when you heat it the molecules get enough energy and they spread apart right reactivity would dictate how reactive they are uh, chemical reactivity this implies chemical reactivity so that's strong shape of the molecule what's that got to do with anything the strength of the covalent bonds that would probably again talk about reactivity and their stability so covalent bond strength like carbon dioxide you might imagine has very strong covalent bonds because they're double but between two carbon dioxide molecules there's very weak attraction that's what allows it to be a gas rather than a solid at room temperature so our correct answer is a lead sulfate is insoluble right it's not soluble so mixing two so the idea is you get the lead ions from oops you get the lead ions from a salt that is soluble and you get the sulfate ions from a salt that's soluble because as soon as they dissolve they're just free floating ions and as soon as they they'll meet each other they'll form lead and it'll because it's insoluble it'll precipitate out of the solution immediately so looking at the equation the easiest way to produce lead is actually just mixing a nitrate with sulfuric acid or any other soluble sulfate would do it the answer is c oops it's happening way too often c again one more time c at 400 degrees celsius the reaction between hydrogen and iodine reaches equilibrium which change in conditions would increase the percentage of hydrogen in equilibrium so it's exothermic reaction it's producing heat i like to put like plus heat over here if it's exothermic and if it's endothermic i'll put plus heat over here just makes the temperature part a little easier and i'll show you why a decrease in pressure if you decrease the pressure it'll actually won't affect the equilibrium at all because on the left hand side you have two moles and on the right hand side you also have two moles worth of gas so pressure will not affect this equilibrium at all a decrease in temperature so if you decrease the temperature decreasing the temperature will favor the side producing and will end up producing more heat right and if you increase the temperature it's producing heat already you're adding heat to the system so it's going to go that way so decreasing the temperature will actually take away heat from the system that's going to go down so more of this reaction go, will go towards the right hand side so let's just read the question one more time would increase the percentage of hydrogen iodide yes so b will definitely increase the percentage of hydrogen iodide an increase in pressure well we talked about pressure an increase in temperature would do the opposite the correct answer is b the following statements about dilute sulfuric acid are all correct which two statements confirm the acidic nature of a solution white precipitate is formed when aqueous barium chloride is added that's true but doesn't talk about it being an acid so i'm going to mark it as not relevant the solution turns anhydrous copper sulfate from white to blue huh that's probably not even the sulfuric acid doing anything it's just the water in this acid so that's it's not even sulfuric acid um addition of addition of universal indicator shows the solution has a ph value of less than seven that's definitely talking about it being an acid the solution reacts with copper oxide forming a blue solution that's also true because copper oxide is basic and acidic acids will readily react with them so three and four three and four three and four three and four 
delta d. Is our answer. The diagram shows the structure of the compound 1,3-butadiene. So the diene implies two enes, right? So like bicycle means bi means two. Over here they're using di. So it's just a fancy way of see, saying this molecule's name. How many molecules of hydrogen are needed to saturate one molecule? So each double bond requires um, each carbon-carbon double bond requires two hydrogens. You have two hydrogens, so you'll require four hydrogen atoms, and you'll get four atoms by two hydrogen molecules. Right? So you'll need two molecules. Correct answer is B. In one molecule of carbon dioxide, what is the total number of electrons present and how many are involved in bonding between carbon and oxygen atoms? So carbon, carbon has um, six protons and oxygen has eight protons. That means they have six electrons and eight electrons, but in carbon dioxide there are two. So that's six electrons from the carbon, 16 electrons from the oxygen, a total of 16 and 22 electrons, right? And how many are involved in bonding? So here's carbon dioxide and each line is two electrons. So each line is two electrons. You have four bonds, so to speak. Fancy way of drawing bonds here, right? You have eight electrons. The correct answer is D. Which statement explains why magnesium oxide has very high melting point? Magnesium atoms and oxygen atoms are joined by strong co- Ionic, my man, ionic. Ionic. Uh, they're talking about ionic. Okay, the crystal lattice of magnesium oxide resembles that of demand. No, it's pretty square, right? Like that's, and that doesn't help why it's better anyway. Magnesium ions are strongly attracted to the oxide ions. That's true. That's what keeps them in their lattice. They're held. They're holding each other way tightly. They're united, you know? So, yeah. And said the reaction between magnesium and, uh, who cares about the reaction between magnesium and oxygen? Okay, correct answer is C. When added to 20 centimeter cube of 0.5 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid, which substance would give a neutral solution? So you have to match the Moles of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid um, has, uh, so we're talking about sodium hydroxide. Let's just do a complete titration question. Sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. And if I try to balance this question out, it's going to be in a 2SO4 plus 2H2O. There's a 2 here. The ratio between them is 1 to 2. Over here you have 0 0.02 decimeter cube of 0.5 moles. So this is mole per decimeter cube, right? So multiplying the two, you'll get 0 0.01 moles are present in the initial amount mentioned. This is actually 0 0.01 moles. See, I actually want 0 0.02 moles, right? Which of these would give me 0 0.02 moles? The first one won't. That's the exact same calculation. So this is going to give me 
0 0.01 moles the second one will give me 0 0.005 moles is going to be 0.04 moles and we have 0.02 moles correct answer is D the fertilizer ammonium nitrate is manufactured from ammonia by a two-stage process what is the maximum mass of fertilizer that can be made if 17 tons of ammonia is available uh, let's make our lives easier let's replace all the tons with grams so let's say all the options are talking about grams so the fertilizer ammonium nitrate blah de blah de blah it's manufactured from ammonia what is the maximum mass of fertilizer that can be made from only 17 grams so essentially one mole from one mole of ammonia so you have one mole over here da -di -da -di -da -da, then you have nitrate okay so then you need ammonia again so you probably want to use half of this 0 0.5 moles of this so in the other process you can use the rest of the ammonia again to make your ammonium nitrate so essentially what you're doing is trying to make nitric acid and the other ammonia reacts with this to form ammonium nitrate fair enough so you want to use 0.5 and that's going to dictate how the equation works uh, so if you're making 0.5 you're also going to make 0.5 of this and you'll have 0.5 of this this reaction goes to completion to produce 0 0.5 moles worth of ammonium nitrate the MR for which is 80 so the mass is going to be 0.5 multiplied by 80 which will give me 40 grams and we were talking about tons initially 40 tons the correct answer is B in the Haber process nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia which factor increases both speed of reaction and the amount of ammonia produced I'm gonna say temperature increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction but let's see if it increases the temperature uh, you increase heat over like you're producing heat because it's an exothermic reaction increasing the temperature will actually not favor this experiment it's gonna favor the left hand side so increasing the pressure will also increase the rate of your reactions more chances of successful collisions and you have four moles of gas over here you have two moles so this is out right and yeah your most likely choice is C decreasing the temperature will produce more ammonia but will slow down the rate of the reaction so this is also out adding a catalyst will only affect the rate of reaction right so the best answer is C which process does not involve either oxidation and reduction so one easy way to find out oxidation and reduction is if you have a let's say a pure metal reacting with anything could be anything right and they're turning into a compound that's one easy way to find out oxidation and reduction so formation of ammonium sulfate from ammonia and sulfuric acid is actually not a redox reaction formation of nitrogen monoxide from ammonia okay so let's figure this out uh, nitrogen monoxide is NO the charge on oxygen or the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2 so the equation X the oxidation state of nitrogen plus the oxidation state of oxygen should all overall equal to 0 X equals to plus 2 in ammonia you have nitrogen with three hydrogens hydrogen each has a charge of positive one so what is the charge or the oxidation state of nitrogen it's unknown but add three hydrogens charge to it which is positive one times three all sum up to zero so over here it's negative three so nitrogen has a is changing its oxidation state so either oxidation or reduction is taking place from formation of sulfuric acid from sulfur pure substance turning into a compound definitely over here it's zero 
over here it's not zero right in the oxidation state formation of zinc it's the reverse but essentially same thing right so the best answer is a